Come on. Go on in. No. Wait. You have to find me anything. Wait. Now. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Ingram Jones, and I have with me a lightweight making big noise in Grimsby. His name is Kevin Hooper, or better known as Kevin Super Hooper. Kevin, how are we doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm great. Thank you so much for returning to Bayloric TV. For people who don't know who you are, just give us a little overview of your record and what you've done in sports so far. Yeah, um, I've had uh, 22 fights, won 19, lost three. Um, British uh, title contender next, um, a mandatory, so just looking forward to that now. Okay, in terms of guys that you fought in the lightweight division so far, tell us who you fought so far. Um, I, I boxed uh, Andy Keys for the English Open. Um, beat him on points and then I defended it against Adam Dingsdale and okay. won that on points again. Okay, so you're an uh, English champion, are you? I vacated that. Um, obviously, Ahara Davis went on and uh, fought for that and won that. Um, I vacated it so I can get my shot at um, the British title. Okay, there are rumours that you've got a British title, potential British title fight against... Uh... I can't remember the gentleman's name again. Um, Scott Cardell. Scott Card. Scott is Cardell. That's it. Scott yeah. Cardell. Um, so, what's the news on that? Is that a rumor? Is that true? Is that in? Is that is is that concrete or is that just still rumors? No, no. Um, just waiting for the date to be announced. Um, but I am mandatory next for it, so it's not rumors. Okay, there are sto There are stories that potentially you could be fighting the September tenth date. On the Kelbrook card, other rumours saying you're going to fight another time. Do you know when around the time you'll be fighting? Um, not as yet. Hopefully, it may be on the Anthony Crawler bill on September 24th. Okay. It, 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 it makes sense to be on that with um, Gallagher having his lads on that show. Okay. So, um, what is it? What, how do you feel going against the great Joe Gallagher? Yeah, I mean... You know, I know Joe Gallagher well. Um, I've, I've been in his camp sparring his, his lads. Um, super respect there. He's, he's a great trainer. But um, I've earned my, my shot at the British title and I'm looking forward to taking it. So what's your thoughts on Scotty Cardell? Obviously the guy that is the champion at the moment. Um, I mean, he's had a few fights recently and, uh, you know, uh, a questionable... I think he fought a guy the other day and... Uh, yeah, he didn't look great when he fought that guy. I can't remember the guy's name was again. Sean Dodd. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So yeah. talk to me about that the Dodd fight. Yeah, I mean Scott Scott is a very good uh, boxer. Um, I rate him and um, on them two fights, I just he didn't perform as well and Sean Dodd. Um and it was close close fight and I, I thought he just edged it, but um Scott Cardo got got the win and um, to my shot now I mean I've earned my shot I've, I've got myself into mandatory position and I look forward to the challenge ahead what do you think it's going to take for you to beat Scotty Cardell I know, I've got to beat my very best um, Cat is, is a skillful boxer um, I've just I mean I've been improving all the time Um under my new trainers, I just I'm going from strength to strength. Now, so who are you? So who are your trainers at the moment? Um, I've got Mick Blyven, I've got Andy Blackett, and I've got a former pro in Matty Teague. All right, tell us a bit more about them and your setup. Yeah, I mean, Mick uh, is is from. An amateur boxing ground, um, a kickboxing ground as well. Um, it's good on like the, the fitness, the strength and everything. I've got uh, one of my old teammates and former amateur stars. I mean, he was ABA finalist many years ago and 
Matty Teague, he was, he was a former pro in the featherweight and he, he got himself to like Central Area title, but had to retire due to hand injuries. And you and you feel confident that this is the team that's going to secure your British title win? Yeah, I mean, me all the way, and I can't ask for a better team and guys to have in my corner. I'm I'm confident in them. So I guess you had a team beforehand. What was it that made you make the change? Um, we just went in separate ways, and um, was it a decision that you thought? I mean, we was it a, was made it? The Go ahead. We both made the decision just like to, to part, and okay. I, I was looking at like um, so sort of, I had enough with this, but I was going to retire. But so one of my friends took me to this other gym, and it, it just went from strength to strength there, and just the success is coming along. Well, I guess you're the guy taking the punches in the ring, so I guess you need to have the, you need to have the best of support around you. Boxing is a very lonely sport, so you need to have a good setup around you. Yeah, I mean, all three of my coaches have been there and done it. They pushed me all the way, and I'm confident in them. So, so tell me the differences that you're noticing now, because I know it's cliche to say, "Well, I've changed camps and things are all going better now." What are the significant changes in in Super Hooper that that you could say now in this this era of your career, as opposed to what you had before. Yeah, I mean, I, I just feel bigger and stronger. I'm, I'm I'm doing more weights than I used to before. I'm I'm boxing more aggressively, more on the front foot. Whereas before, I was I was on the back foot, counter punching. But now I've changed my style. I come forward, and I've always got the back foot. But I'm yeah happy. Like on the front foot now and being being aggressive. Okay, so let's talk a bit a bit more about what how you how you what's your philosophy about boxing in you in your mindset? What are you what's your style like, for example? Let's talk a bit more about your style and your inspirations. Um, my style. Um, obviously, my inspirations of like Ricky Hatton. He was a a very good boxer. He was a people's champion. He was. Massive body shot, and I I take that style into to my game. I like body shots, and Paul Ingle was one of my other favourites. His his work rate, his head movement was just phenomenal, and like that's what I love about my game now. I want to put that into to play. Wow, well, Paul Ingle, that that's a that's a flash in the past. Man, I remember Paul Ingle as well. He a very yeah, good yeah, fighter, yeah, very good fighter. Was. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about uh, you as a lightweight. Is it difficult for you to make lightweight? I mean, are, is it easy for you to make the weight? What's the situation with that? Lightweight, I can, can make that easy. And I feel better now coming back up to lightweight from super further. Um, I feel stronger and just I can make it easy, to be honest. So, so what's, your normal, what's your normal walk around weight? Normal walk around of ten ten, so I'm not not like Mac. I used to be. I used to go. Uh, I used to go like to eleven and a half and stuff, but I don't go over eleven at all now, and I make weight quite easy. Okay, so talk about sparring. Uh, who are the guys you who you've been sparring with or working with recently? Recently, I, um, I've been El Barin uh, for his challenge in Leeds. Um, that's good sparring. Luke's a very good lad. Um, I've been sparring Josh Warrington, uh, another good lad, and um, Isaac Glow. Yes. Uh, um, that's been down in Doncaster. I've been sparring them, and then I've been sparring Samir Munyamai as well, and from Hull. Um, so I'm getting plenty of sparring in, and all all good lads. So it's just nice to be in the mix getting all the experience with them lads. Well, those guys you're mentioning, are they all lightweights? Uh, Josh Warren, in, no, he's a uh, featherweight. He's, he's fighting for, I think, WBC International. Um, and you've got Isaac Lowe, he's a featherweight as well. Um, same with Samia. But Luke Campbell is obviously a lightweight. 
So, so I think I've been getting all the lads. It's just been for their way and the speed and just the awkwardness of the, the boxing. So how is it? I mean, to spar the featherweights, okay, there's less of a chance you fight in the featherweights. Yeah. But Luke Campbell is a guy potentially you could fight. Why would you spar Luke Campbell? Nah, Luke Campbell's different. Worldwise, it's is above me. Um, but to gain that experience, his work rate, his style, is a southpaw as well, and it's just, it is a good lad. And for me to be asked to go sparring, just it proves that I'm, I must be doing something right as well. It's a good fighter. Got a lot of time yeah. for him, Luke Campbell. Good fighter. And um, what were your thoughts on the, on his defeat he had? That that fight that he had where he lost. Do you feel that Luke Campbell's put in too early in his career? Was that just a miscalculation or what? You know what I mean, he's looking for that rematch with the guy, and I believe he'll get it once he gets past this guy uh, in Leeds on the 30th. Um, but previous sparring, I knew he had um, sort of an injury, a shoulder injury, um, before that fight. So but I think that played a part in it. Okay, cool. Let's have a talk about the top 10 lightweights um, from 1 to 10. Uh, if, you, if you could probably get them off the top of your head. Um, let's talk with let's talk about number one, the number one lightweight in the country. Who would that be? Yeah, I believe it's Anthony Crawler. That's number one. Okay, talk about Crawler to me. Yeah, Crawler's a really nice kid. is is a, a great champion and has improved massively in his game, and it is proved to where he's at. So, he's a really nice kid. And got all the time in the world for him. Got a fight coming up again. Uh, uh... Oh my god, my mind is so gone tonight. He's yeah, fighting Linares. unification bout. Yeah, Linares, yeah. Linares, yes. Tough fight there, but a good fight. Yeah, it's a very good fight. I mean, I, I believe he'll be successful in that. He's, he's improving all the time, Crawler. So credit he's, to he's getting these master Yeah. Credit to Joe Gallagher for that. So next after after uh Crawler. Yeah, it's Terry Flanagan. Yes. Thoughts on Kvalligan? He's, he's a good lad. I've asked about him in the past. Um, he's, a, he's a very good, fast southpaw as well. Um, he's proof up there. and Him and Crawler will be a great fight in the future. Is there, is there a huge gap between Crawler and Flanagan, do you think, in your eyes? Uh, no, that mean it's an obvious fight and it'll be a, a great fight for the fans. Okay, uh, number three, British lightweight. Number three. Um, don't know who number three is. You've got the likes of Derry Matthews. You've got. Um, Luke, where's Luke Campbell fitting then? I, I believe he's number four. You see? Okay. Four. He could be uh, at the top in his time, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got Tommy Coyle as well. Where's Tommy Coyle fit into the mix? Yeah, I think when he fight in Phil Light's title next against Tyrone Nurse. Oh, so he's moved up now. Okay, so yeah, that's he's moved up, yeah. Okay, cool. So where do you so where, where are you ranked in the, the, the box rec at the moment? I'm box rec number seven. Yeah. Okay. So you're number number seven. What does it feel like when you look at Box yeah. Rec and you see your name and you're ranked in the top ten <laughs> and in Britain? What does it's, that make you feel like? Oh, it's it's great. It's to to be recognised and obviously to be at top ten. It, it's a massive achievement. Okay. Definitely. Let's talk about uh, weigh-ins. What are your thoughts on same day weigh-ins? Or 24-hour weigh-ins. Do you think that they should go to having the same-day weigh-ins, or do you think we should go stick stick with the 24-hour weigh-ins? And how? And for you, how does it suit you? It suits me the 24-hour before weigh-ins because obviously you got to make that weight and you got to rehydrate. You've got to it's making that weight. It, it does sort of drain you as well. So just to to get something back in your system, definitely. Okay. Next question. Um, Box Nation or Sky Sports Matchroom? Uh, for me, I'd say Matchroom, yeah. Okay. Any reasons why? It's just better cards, I believe. And obviously, I'm going to be on it next. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, promoter Warren Hearn. Oh, they're both good, and obviously Eddie Ernst did that at the minute. So. Okay. Um, let's think now. Uh, gloves. What sort of gloves do you like? Uh, gloves. Hmm. Oh, well, the, um, possibly my favourites uh, that I've boxed in probably the Reyes punches gloves yeah yeah any reason nice, why you like Reyes? Nice feel them mm-hmm. any any reason otherwise for them? no just I mean I won the Midlands area title in them and really nice feel the fit to your, to your hand a lot nicer. Okay. Let's talk about Grimsby. That's your that's your town, right? Yeah, yeah. Grimsby, so are you yeah. are you are you a local celebrity in Grimsby? Well, yeah. I mean, because there's any uh, me at the top of the list of boxers at the minute that I've um, just started out. So me being a, recently when I won the English title, I was the only guy to do it. From Grimsby, which is a massive achievement for myself and the town. So, when you won the English title, what, what, what did, what first of all did it mean for yourself winning the English title? But then, what effect did that have for you around in Grimsby? Because you know, it, you know, it's it, it's obviously a big event, a big big thing to have done. Yeah, I mean, for for myself, it's just a massive achievement, and it just makes you feel like. All the hard work you've you've put in and and down, it's it's a massive achievement for the town because no one's done it before, and it's just a sense of pride for, for around the town. Okay, uh, O'Hara Davis. I guess you've seen his uh, his beginning of his career. How's he look for you so far? Yeah, Harry's uh, looking very good. Um, he's a good boxer and um, he's, he's making noise in in. Was well, I think he's moved up now to like well um, himself, so yes, he's definitely making noise. Okay, what's your thoughts on Ricky Burns, the former lightweight champion who's moved up and moved up in weight and now world champion again? He's, he's beat the odds there and he's, he's done well for himself, moving up weight and winning another world title. It's a massive achievement for himself. Mm-hmm. Okay. What a- Go back and talk about your own boxing career. And you talk about the improvements that you've made. Yeah. What do you think are the act- – where do you think um, those improvements have been and why do you think those improvements have been made and where do you think you need to be moving next in terms of improvements to move forward? So past, present, future. My improvements I me mean, I've started coming forward more being a pressure fighter, not mm-hmm. and not being a, a back foot fighter, uh counter puncher. Um, because you can't always win fights like that. Um mm-hmm. I mean I, coming back up to lightweight, I've improved my strength, uh, my power, um just my all round boxing ability and um I just keep keep my strength for strength like me improvements have I've achieved winning that English title. I've had two cracks before at Super Featherweight, and now I've I've become English champion um, by moving up weight and just improving my boxing. And on the front foot, it's a lot more better for me, beneficial. So mm-hmm. the improvements are there. So when you're sparring with these guys, whether it be lightweights or the featherweights. When you're gaining there, what's your mindset? What do you look to get out of a spa? And and how do, how is it a, a case for you to, to get the most out of it and not be used as like either a punching bag or somebody taking advantage of you? How do you how do you set that up so that you get the best out of that training session? Well, I've just got a, a box to my game plan to to my in and just just to be in with those guys that are Levels above me, maybe different ways, but reach the top of their game and just to be in there and matching me own with them 
it's just a great. It's only going to improve me as a fighter. So it's there. Fantastic. That's good to hear. Um, in terms of boxing, your community and Grimsby, what would you like to see for the future for Grimsby? And of course, you'll be now their leading boxer. What would you like to see in the future if you had the opportunity? Yeah, just more lads coming through and obviously more lads to and achieving big things, whether it be amateurs, professionals, just putting Grimsby on the map for, for achieving um, anything in the game, really, just winning stuff. Just, and, I mean, obviously, I mean, no. for me, I, I, I want to win the British title, and that's my next destination. And that's I'm going to win that British title for for, for myself, for my family, for my town. What would it mean becoming British champion for you? Oh, it'd be massive. Setting it up for, for for myself, my family, the town. It'd be something to be proud of putting Grimsby on the map massively. I mean, if you were to sit down right now and have that British title on your waist or on your, on, on your on your shoulder, what would that feeling be like for you? Just in visualising that now. It'd just be massive. It'd be... Like I've done it. It'll be the pride, the just the achievement, and to to win that belt. It's the best belt out there, and obviously to have it there, it'll be just it'll be it'll be amazing. So okay, the fight gets announced between yourself and Cardell. What are you gonna do differently? Because this is the big one. This is the big fight for you. What are you going to do differently from in terms of preparation? You have longer training camp. Are you going to be ticking over now? Are you going to Get more better sparring in. What are you going to do? Yeah, I'll be getting better sparring in, and I'll just, just keep doing what I'm doing, just keep improving, and just to reach your dream. And that's that's all I do. Just to win that British title. Are there any plans? I know a lot of guys seem to go away to over to the Mediterranean, get themselves lots of heat and all that sort of running up the mountain stuff. Are you going to do anything like that? Or are you going to keep everything based in Grimsby or in the UK? I've got the chance to, to go over to Cyprus. Um, but that's something my team will, will decide. I mean, the opportunity is there if we need to take it. But just, just keep doing what we're doing. Just keep improving and go from strength to strength. Fantastic. In terms of sponsors, I know that, you know, some guys who are not obviously limelight guys and sponsorship. How's it for you? Are you getting sponsors and getting the support that you necessary uh, in Grimsby? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've got um, my sponsors here. I've got two main big sponsors. I've got Fomatic and I've got Ready Rent a Car that uh, help me out massively. Um, I've got a few other additional little ones, but I mean, it all helped and helped me just to achieve my dream. That's all I want to do. That's great to hear. It's fantastic to hear that you are getting the support. There are fighters out there that don't get the support. And when you when you say something like that, and if your own community people are chipping in to help you out, that's great to hear. It's fantastic to hear. Uh, just before we close, let's talk a little bit more about how people can contact you and, and be there for your big fight whenever that's announced. Yeah, I mean, I'm on Twitter, Super, and Facebook. Kevin Hooper, got Instagram, Super Roots 15. Uh, I think that's all I've got, to be honest. Uh, yeah, that's all I've got, yeah. Um, in terms of the name Super Hooper, I did, I did ask you that time, why are you Super Hooper? <laughs> uh, I don't know, to be honest. Um, uh, some oh, just said it in my jokingly and it, it, it just it goes and I ain't gonna change it. That, that's that's me now. The Super Hooper. Any any so any possibility for the British title fight? You'll come out with a Superman tune, maybe a, a cape around your neck, and maybe anything like that. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not like that. But <laughs> what, I'll <do. laughs> what I'll do is I, I'll let I'll let fans decide. Um. What ringtone song to come out to? 
I'll put it out there and see, see what they come up with. Okay, and just something to your fans. What? How have the fans <laughs> and, and your fans been for you? Oh, my fans have been amazing. The support's been amazing, and we, we're finally getting there, and we will get there. So, have you got a message to them? Just thank you for all your support and keep on supporting. And uh, come September, October, whenever it's going to be, I will be British champion. Defiant, super, Kevin Hooper. Thank you so much for talking to Bayloric TV. No worries, thank you. We appreciate you always and good luck. Hi, thank you very much. Take care, champ. Nice one to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.